Are you an aging adult living in Rockingham County? Are you a person who personally or a member of your family has a disability? Do you need help with doing the things you would typically do on your own every day? If so, this is the segment for you. Stay tuned. TCT presents Public Report, a look at the issues and events of importance to our viewing area. Now, here is your host. I am Valda Ford, and welcome to Public Report. Today, I have the pleasure of having with me Lee Covington and LaToya Lowry. They're here from Rockingham County to tell us how to take care of our aging and disabled loved ones. Welcome. Thank you. Good to be here. So good to have you both. Thank you. So, Lee, you are the executive director, and LaToya, you are in charge of in-home services? That's correct. So, let's talk a little bit about your agency. First of all, let's tell us about this agency with the big name, the Aging, Disability, and Transport Services of Rockingham County. Okay, great. We were actually founded in 1973, so we're coming up on our 40th birthday, originally known as the Council on Aging, and the name was changed about three years ago. And uh, we provide a number of services to the community in addition to our in-home aid program. We also offer senior nutrition services, Meals on Wheels. We are the public transit provider for the county. Uh, we provide CAPDA Medicaid waiver services, case management, um, an adult daycare program, and we work closely with the hospitals to work on transitioning folks back home as well. Okay, so I know there are some services that you mentioned that many people will be familiar with. For instance, <coughs> Meals on Wheels. I know after having had a senior relative who was not able to take care of herself, Meals on Wheels was a life-saving service. Do you find that that is still the same today and are more and more people needing that service? Absolutely. Uh, that is a service that really allows folks to stay in their home for as long as possible. And we hear that story every day. And it's more than just that hot meal one time a day. It's that connection with a volunteer that comes to deliver that meal. And oftentimes we find that that's the only face-to-face -face interaction that that senior has during the course of the day. And they so look forward to it. Well, I know that's important. And LaToya, I know you're in charge of in-home services. So you're sending people out who might need a little bit more than just having a meal delivered. What type services are you providing? Well, we provide services, um, as Lee uh, just mentioned, for our CAP, serve, our CAP clients. Um, we also serve clients who have um, home community care block grant. And what are CAP clients? CAP clients are our community alternative program clients and you must have Medicaid in order to be eligible for our CAP services. And our home community care block grant clients are actually state funded. Yes. Um, there's a program with um, the Piedmont Triad Regional Council and they're located here in Greensboro um, and they provide state funds for that population of clients as well as our project care clients and we also offer services to private pay and we offer um, in-home aid services as far as with personal care services bathing grooming um, your hygiene help with medication administration all of those kind of things well not med medication administration but just making sure that they're actually taking their medication we right. can monitor them but we're not allowed to yeah. actually administer medications all right yes well I can see how that also would help people be able to stay in their homes because someone's watching out for them making sure that they're getting some good nutrition that they are actually able to move around and get up from the chair and 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 just have good hygiene is so important to people who can't take care of themselves. Right. Now I know that you are looking at your 40th anniversary coming up. How has the service changed over the years? Oh wow. Um, I, I think what we're seeing is the need is greater than ever. You know the basic services that we provide really have not changed because people's basic human needs have not changed. Mm -hmm but the community need is greater than ever and so that's one of our greatest challenges now is trying to find creative and effective ways to meet that need um, public funding has really not kept pace with the need 
And as you're hearing now, budgets on a state and federal level, level are in trouble. Yes. And um, so we have to, again, find creative ways to meet those needs on very limited resources. So how many people are being served every month or every year? Well, overall, we're probably serving, if you look at all of our programs, I would say around six to 7,000 folks a month. Wow. Now, certainly, there are some programs that are larger and serve more folks. Uh, but it's a lot of people. It's a lot of people. So when you're looking at people who need help in the home, so six to 7,000 people taken care of every month, that's a phenomenal number for a relatively small county like Rockingham. So if I need the service from you, how would I say, I know my mother is okay mentally, but she needs help getting around. She does need help with people to help her organize her life. How would I start off getting the service from you? Well, you can actually call our agency and we will ha we have our intake coordinator that will take a referral. Um, if you're private pay, then we actually, once we have the referral, then our registered nurses come out to do an assessment. And while in the home, the registered nurse, along with the client and or family member, will create a care plan. And that care plan actually outlines all the tasks that are needed by the client, such as the personal care services, as well as light housekeeping. And that's discussed between the client, the family member, as well as the aide, once we place an aide in the home. And how many hours can a person receive services from you? It can range between one to eight hours. So if I just need someone to come by and make sure that I'm actually eating that meal that's been delivered to me, that's enough. Or if I need someone to be there while a family member goes to work. Yes. That's, mm -hmm. That yes, can that's happen correct. as well. Yes. Our private pay normally can range between one and whatever hours, um, but for our CAP clients, it usually starts out about four hours on up to eight hours, as well as our block grant between two and four hours a day. Now, you talked a bit about your work with the hospital mm -hmm. there. I would imagine that this is a very coordinated effort in order to really make it work and make it cost efficient. So. What happens with your relationship with the hospital? How does that come together? Do they help refer to you? Or many times you may be referring back to them, whether formally or informally. Right. They do refer to us. We have a care transitions coordinator that is community-based but spends a lot of time in the hospital. And when she receives a referral, she typically tries to make a visit to that patient while they are still in the hospital and that process begins then. You know, what we're finding is oftentimes folks that come out of the hospital and wind back up in that hospital within a few days, it's often not the medical condition. It's the psychosocial issues. Mm -hmm. It's the fact that they didn't have food to eat or they didn't have a way to get to their doctor's appointment for that follow-up visit, things like that. Maybe just loneliness. And so we're trying to bridge that gap to really keep folks healthy in their home and out of the hospital if we can. Wow, so that's really important. Tell me about this one call center. Okay, that's something that's brand new. We just started September 1st, and for anyone who needs Medicaid-funded transportation, so if you have Medicaid, you, transportation is available to get to doctor's appointments and Medicaid-funded services. And so folks now, where they used to have to call social services for out-of-county and us for in-county, now they just have the one number to call for any Medicaid transportation service and that's we're really hoping that that will help with furthering that coordinated system and making it much more effective and more efficient for the folks who need that service. Well that is really important when you have a one-stop shop you're not worried about well I gotta call this number then someone's gonna refer me to that number you're right. on hold for 30 minutes each time and maybe you even give up. That's right. Latoya tell me a little bit about some of the stories that the people who are cared for by your agency might tell you or some of the people who work for you, what kind of benefit both ways do they get from your services? Well, a lot of our clients uh, report that they actually enjoy having someone there as a com companion um, as well as emotional support because a lot of our clients do not have family members who are located in the same area. And so when our aide comes out for two or three, four hours, that provides comfort and security for a lot of our clients. And our aides, they just love, they enjoy going out to the client's home and just being there and talking to them and just being a support. So how do you help patients receive Medicaid if they have, they're, they're struggling right now, the economy is bad, they're in this place where they're trying to make it themselves. 
Some people don't even realize that Medicaid was developed to be a short term, help get you up off your back, help keep you from mm -hmm. sliding farther down. How can people apply to even get to your services? They actually need to contact um, the Department of Social Services <clears throat> for eligibility um, for Medicaid. And once they are eligible and start receiving Medicaid services, then they can be put on the list for CAP services. And a case manager and RN will go out to do an assessment to see if they actually um, meet the criteria for our services. Well, that's really wonderful. It's an amazing service. Now, tell me about adult daycare. I know I have an 80-year-old relative who has some cognitive disabilities, mm -hmm. doesn't fit any special place, but adult daycare service is really a great thing for him. That is the place where he would fit. And you mentioned earlier those family caregivers who have to work during the day. Mm -hmm. Adult daycare really is the answer for that. Um, our center is currently located in Stoneville, and we're licensed to serve 40 folks during the day. We're open from 8.30 to 4.30 every day. And um, meaningful activities, fun, fun and games, um, a hot meal for lunch, morning and afternoon snacks. So it's just a great environment for seniors and for adults who need a little bit of extra support during the day uh, to come and have a great, a great time. Wow. Yeah. So I know you were thinking of having something special going on this weekend. Can you tell me a little bit about it? It's actually Tuesday night. Uh, we're hosting our first ever po uh, political candidates forum and we've invited all the candidates for Rockingham County Commissioner as well as candidates for the State House and State Senate. And we're going to be spending about two hours together with them just focusing on those questions and those issues that are very relevant to the topics we're discussing this morning. I would imagine a big part of that would be continuing to have the funding that will allow you to do these great services for people who are aged or disabled or just need somebody around them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So tell us how to get in touch with you if we want to get more about more information or we need your services. How will we contact you? Well, there are a couple of ways. Actually, you can pick up the phone and just call our number, which is 336-349-2343. That's our main line. Or if you have access to the Internet, you can go to our website, which is www.adtsrc.org and those ways will get you in quickly. Well, it has definitely been my pleasure to have you here and to talk with you about these wonderful services and I hope that people will continue to contact you understanding that our seniors and the people who are the most vulnerable in our communities are the ones that if you take care of them, the society is just that much stronger. Mm. Exactly. Right. So I hope that you will always be there in the county and that the people who are responsible financially will understand the importance of your services and will continue to support you. I imagine you would take donations as well. Absolutely. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for doing all the great work that you do. And I hope that 40 more years from now, you're celebrating your 80th anniversary. Great. Thank you. Thank you.